Good day everyone. As we embrace learning in the virtual environment, the mentoring committee realizes all the more the need for our faculty to support you, our students, especially during these times of uncertainty and adjustment. While Chad maintains that face-to-face -face meetings will not be allowed, we want to make sure that you are given the support that you need, specifically through mentoring. If you are a first-year medical student, we welcome you to the De La Salle College of Medicine. You will be assigned a mentor once the list of students have been finalized. For a second, third, and fourth year students, congratulations for completing the requirements last year despite the challenges. You have come this far and we are very proud of you. So let's define mentoring again. It is a process whereby an experienced, highly regarded, empathic person, the mentor, guides another individual, for example, you as the mentis, in the development and examination of your own ideas, learning, personal, and professional development. Mentoring functions are of two types. Career or professional functions are those aspects of a relationship that will enhance your advancement in the medical organization. This happens when your mentor coaches you, builds a network with you, or sponsors you into important medical events. Psychosocial functions are those aspects of a relationship that will enhance your sense of competence, identity, and effectiveness. This happens when your mentor counsels you, confirms what you're positively doing, and accepts your role in the medical profession. A lot of role modeling is expected to happen here. Our mentoring program started a few years ago with advisory program in year levels 1 and 2, and then the voluntary mentoring program in year levels 3 and 4. Because of the positive feedback from both faculty and students, we decided that mentoring should start from year level 1 and continue to year level 4 until you graduate. In other words, we want to see you flourish over time. What are the benefits of mentoring? For the mentees, having a mentor and receiving more mentoring functions is associated with more favorable objective and subjective outcomes. While your mentor cannot study and take the exams for you, we hope that you'll get good grades and promoted on time because you have been advised on study habits or time management, for example. We also want you to have that feeling of confidence and satisfaction that you are indeed following the right track in your pursuit of a medical degree. For us mentors, the benefits of having you as mentees sometimes go even beyond our expectations. We develop a personal support network and get information and feedback from you which help us perform better. While there are challenges, we are genuinely happy that we are able to help you, our students, achieve your dream. Add on bonus is the recognition and promotion that we may get. There are four phases in a mentoring relationship. Phase one is called initiation and negotiation. Phase two, involves cultivation and enabling. Phase three is separation, and phase four is redefinition. The initiation phase is the getting to know each other phase. It used to be a face-to-face -face meeting in the Villa Rosa Hall, in the auditorium, in the clinic, in an office, or even in McDonald's. Unfortunately for now, we have to meet with you in MS Teams. Rest assured that as soon as face-to-face -face meetings are allowed, we will be happy to talk to you again in De La Salle College of Medicine. Now, whether you are new in the College of Medicine or have been here for a while, it would be good to revisit your mentoring partnership agreement with your mentor, especially this year that we will be meeting indefinitely in a virtual manner. This is the time to sign the form if you have not done so. This form will be available through Moodle. The first meeting checklist should be accomplished during the initiation phase. Get to know each other. 
share information about your professional and personal life, learn something new about your mentor or your mentee. You might discover that you both have the same passion for cooking or that you might have completely different political views. Establish guidelines and expectations. When and where will you meet? For now, we will meet through MS Teams. How will you schedule meetings? The mentoring meetings will be embedded in the school calendar to make sure that mentoring actually happens. How will you communicate between meetings? You may exchange numbers, email, create a chat group through Viber or Messenger. You can be creative with your mentor. Will there be any fixed agenda items to be discussed in each of your meetings? Well, you should be productive. How will you exchange feedback? How will you measure success? A successful mentoring relationship also starts with a clear definition of goals. You should carefully reflect on your professional and personal goals for this academic year. Those are your short-term goals and in the next three to five years for your long-term goals. You have to be as specific as possible and you have to indicate how you will assess if the goals have been achieved. For example, your goal as a first year medical student is to pass all your evaluations in biochemistry. Or if you are a medical clerk, your goal is to be able to successfully insert intravenous lines at least 10 times without help. Your mentor should be able to help you evaluate your set goals using the following important characteristics. Are your goals definite and precise? Are your goals quantifiable and their attainment measurable? What is your action plan to achieve the goals? Are your goals realistic in terms of time, resources, and circumstances? A reasonable duration for each meeting is one and a half hours. To maximize this precious time in cultivating your relationship and addressing goals and issues, the 10-20-60 rule is adjusted, broken down as follows. The first 10 minutes is to engage in personal check-in. Your mentor will usually ask how you've been since the last meeting. Please don't forget to return the favor by asking how your mentor has been too. We all need encouragement, especially these trying times. The next 20 minutes is to be used on front burner issues like your upcoming evaluation, OSCE, case management conference, research protocol revisions, and even urgent personal issues. There's no telling what issues will come up in our lives. The last 60 minutes should now focus on the achievement of your goals, especially professional goals. This is the time that you and your mentor should discuss academic performance and the content of your portfolios. Celebrate small victories each semester, each year, each rotation. Effective mentoring relationships are built on trust. When people trust each other, they allow their most authentic self to emerge. So listen to each other, to your mentor and your commentees. Share reservations and uncertainties. Demonstrate by your acts that you are trustworthy. This is the way to cultivate a relationship. As you cultivate the relationship, exchanging feedback assists both mentors and mentees to reflect, learn, and develop. I am sure that you as a mentee would like to know your strengths and where you need to improve. We, your mentors, also want to know if we are doing our job well in helping you. Some useful feedback that your mentor can give you may be your strengths and assets, your areas for growth, development, and enhancement, your harmful behaviors or attitudes, and other observations on how you may be perceived by others. On the other hand, you can give your mentor feedback in terms of the following. Whether the advice or guidance she offered was beneficial and solved an issue. Whether your mentor's communication style or actions facilitate a positive mentoring experience. And whether your mentor communication style or actions create challenges or opportunities. Cultivate your relationship 
enable each other to accomplish your goals and objectives. The third phase in mentoring is called separation phase. While this may bring feelings of loss and anxiety, it actually provides you an opportunity to operate independently and demonstrate achievement of your goals. Your mentor will also be able to measure her own success in developing a new talent who is no other than you. As you celebrate the end of an academic year, which is a temporary separation or graduation, take a look at the closure checklist. You and your mentor should discuss how to use the remaining time together. Make sure an important goal has not been overlooked. Plan a form an acknowledgement or celebration of the mentoring relationship. Don't forget to accomplish the evaluation forms for the mentoring program. These are some of the important questions to discuss during the separation phase. Have your set goals been achieved? Have your important issues been discussed? How should your separation be acknowledged? What will be your agenda for the last meeting? The mentoring program officially ends when you graduate, but transitioning to an informal mentoring partnership or even friendship is recommended to yield even greater benefit from the time you spend together with your mentor and co-mentees. So ask yourself, your co-mentees and your mentor, what will be your ideal interaction going forward? Summarizing the important roles of a mentor, these are to support, challenge, and keep your vision for a satisfying and successful career in medicine even when the going gets tough. And there will definitely be tough times. Now, they say that the most successful mentoring partnerships are those in which the mentee, that is you, takes the initiative and truly drives the relationship. In a mentee-driven partnership, it is you who will determine the pace, route, and destination. Your mentor will then be able to offer insights focused on your objectives and issues. How does our program work? Except for first-year students, everyone already has an assigned mentor. Please work it out with your mentor because our meetings will now be online through MS Teams and there should be very few exceptional reasons why meetings can't be done. If you didn't have enough meetings last year, this is your opportunity to catch up. The mentoring meetings should be at least twice every semester and they have been scheduled by your year-level coordinator. We will be using MS Teams for this purpose. You may initiate one-on-one -on -one meetings with your mentor if you feel you need to talk with her to discuss grades, deficiencies, remediation, and other personal concerns. You and your mentor will decide on which platform to use. You have to make sure that she is informed in advance. One of the things we look forward to is the Grand Mentoring Day. This is a half-day activity where mentors and mentees from all year levels meet for fun, food, and fellowship. We will schedule this as soon as gatherings are allowed. Let's talk about other requirements related to mentoring. These are your portfolio of learning, self-assessment, and reflection. A portfolio is a tool to store and record a collection of evidence that demonstrates learning achievements and abilities. It promotes lifelong learning by encouraging reflection of one's own needs and clinical competencies and the needs of one's clients who are your patients. Why should you keep a portfolio? Your portfolio contains documents put together as evidence of your progress in learning. It allows you to think about your personal development plan. What's next for you this month, next semester, next year, after graduation? You can use it to prepare for an interview as you look back on all your experiences and achievement, which they will surely ask. Lastly, it will make it easy for you to develop your CV 
since you have a summary of what happened in the last four or five years of medical education. The Commission on Higher Education has identified the 10 learning outcomes for the Doctor of Medicine program, and it will be good for you to know them by heart. At the end of your medical education, you should be able to demonstrate clinical competence, communicate effectively, lead and manage healthcare teams, engage in research activities, collaborate with interprofessional teams, utilize systems-based approach to healthcare, engage in continuing and professional development, adhere to ethical, professional, and legal standards, demonstrate nationalism, internationalism, and dedication to service, and practice the principles of social accountability. What will be some of the content of your portfolio? If you are a first-year medical student, here are some examples of evidences that you can collect and the corresponding learning outcomes that they address. This is for second-year medical students. Third year. And fourth year, the clinical clerks. For all year levels, it will be good to print a copy of your quarterly academic performance from the School Automate. Document your participation in other learning activities such as Quiz B, Clinical Pathologic Conference, Research Contests, Medical Missions, and other community health projects. Take pride in collecting other recognition and awards and even personal stints such as enrolling in a ride shop. Is there any particular format for a portfolio? We allow open structure as it gives you the opportunity to display your individual learning trajectories and competencies. Of course, this year we will do everything online, including checking, submission, and feedback. Just a few suggestions when you make your portfolio. First, formulate your own learning objectives based on the rotation or course objectives. Second, use captions to indicate the context in which you collected or produced the material. Third, reflect on why the material was included, your learning, and its relevance to your objectives. Lastly, focus your reflection on a particular aspect of a learning experience. Mentoring is the essence for portfolio use. Feedback from your mentor ensures depth of learning and helps you identify your learning needs, formulate learning objectives, and assess achievement of your set objectives. Keep your portfolio up to date. It will be used as evidence for your end-of-year sign-off. Don't be tempted to leave completing it to the last minute. It will be very difficult and really defeats the purpose of keeping one. Included in your portfolio is the self-assessment of the 10 learning outcomes that we discussed previously. Every semester, carefully reflect on where you are in each of the learning outcomes. You and your mentor will see how you're growing over time and which learning outcomes need particular attention. The definitions of these outcomes and how to create this graph will be uploaded in the Moodle. Again, this is Dr. Cherry Tagyang Abu, the Chair of the Mentoring Committee, and in behalf of the Mentoring Committee, we welcome everyone to this challenging academic year 2020-2021.